This is a pop-up sprinkler. Unlike other types of sprinklers that stick out and can be distracting in your yard, it stays hidden at ground level, ensuring a clean look, keeping it from getting cut while mowing, and preventing anyone from tripping over it. When the watering starts, the water pressure pushes the inner stem, raising the watering nozzle above the ground to begin irrigation. But the truly fascinating part isn't just that it pops up. The inner stem actually rotates back and forth, distributing water evenly across your lawn. And you can even adjust the spray angle and distance by turning these screws, allowing for precise control over the watering pattern. Plus, it operates solely on water pressure. Sounds intriguing, right? Let's explore how it works. In this video, we are going to use the Rainbird 5000 rotor to explore the inner workings, but other brands might still use the same principles with slightly different variations. Before we dive into the inner workings of the stem, let's first understand how the inner stem pops up. The inner stem is housed inside a cylindrical case with a spring and secured by a wiper seal. This seal prevents water leakage during spraying and keeps debris out when retracting. At the bottom of the cylinder is a water inlet, which must be connected to an irrigation pipe network capable of delivering water at a pressure of 25 to 65 psi. There are two types of water pressure, static and dynamic. Static pressure results from the weight of the water at rest. For example, underwater pressure increases with depth due to the greater mass of water above. Dynamic pressure, on the other hand, is created by flowing water. In our case, the pump pushes the water, and the moving water exerts pressure on everything in its path. This is dynamic pressure. Let's assume the water pressure at the inlet of our pop-up sprinkler is 40 psi. psi stands for pounds per square inch, meaning that the force exerted on a one-inch square area is equivalent to 40 pounds. As pressurized water enters the sprinkler, it divides its force. Some pushes the base of the stem and the mesh filter, while the rest passes through the filter into the turbine chamber. As the stem rises, water also fills the outer body. The pressurized water ensures that any obstruction is pushed back. With 40 psi pressure falling within the operational range, the stem rises fully due to water pressure, resulting in water exiting the nozzle with increased velocity. After watering, when pressure subsides, the stem retracts inside the body under the spring's force. This explains how the sprinkler's pop-up mechanism functions. Now, Let's delve into the more fascinating aspect, how the stem rotates in both directions with adjustable angle control. The stem is composed of two parts, the stationary bottom part, housing gears and mechanisms, and the upper rotating part, responsible for directional spray. The bottom part of the stem begins with a removable mesh filter designed to capture and filter out any particles or debris that could hinder the mechanism's operation. This filter can be easily removed and cleaned if it becomes clogged. Once pressurized water passes through the filter, it enters the turbine chamber through two small openings. These openings restrict the water flow, causing the water velocity to increase significantly. This phenomenon is explained by the Bernoulli principle, which states that an increase in fluid velocity occurs simultaneously with a decrease in pressure or potential energy of the fluid. To illustrate, imagine water entering the sprinkler at a rate of 5 gallons per minute. The same amount of water must exit the sprinkler per minute. When the outlet size decreases, the water velocity must increase to maintain this flow rate. This principle is akin to squeezing a water hose to increase its reach. Furthermore, these two small openings direct water tangentially onto the turbine blade. This design ensures that the high-velocity water entering the turbine chamber exerts force on the turbine blade, causing it to rotate rapidly. Now we have rotational power from water pressure, but it only spins fast with low torque and only in one direction. 
To increase torque and reduce speed, the turbine connects to a reduction gear drive enclosed within a waterproof case. Water exits the turbine chamber through bottom holes in the gear drive case. Inside the gear drive, the turbine gear meshes with a series of double gears, each with a gear ratio of three. The first set of gears reduces the turbine's revolutions per minute, RPM, by approximately three times, followed by subsequent reductions in the second, third, fourth, and final gears, resulting in an overall speed reduction of about 243 times from the turbine's original speed. Reducing speed increases torque, crucial for rotating the upper part of the stem. This ensures the nozzles can rotate even if obstructed by other objects. For non-reversing 360-degree pop-up sprinklers, the output gear from the gear drive connects to the upper stem through an internal gear fitted to the nozzle shaft, known as the nozzle gear, and the mechanism is done. However, in our reversing 40 to 360-degree rotor, additional components are necessary. Two gears, are added on one side of the output gear and three gears on the other side. Instead of directly meshing with the nozzle gear, the outermost two gears are designed to swing to each side and mesh with the nozzle gear. This swinging action enables reversing functionality. If we look closely at the gear array, when the output gear rotates counterclockwise, the rightmost gear also rotates counterclockwise while the leftmost gear rotates clockwise. To control the gear meshing, a small lever is added to the center shaft. Torsional springs on each side of the lever allow it to quickly snap left or right, facilitating continuous reversing. The torsional springs exert force on the lever, pushing it to one side. As the lever is rotated slightly in the opposite direction, the torsional springs compress until the lever passes its midpoint. At this point, the springs expand, causing the lever to snap completely to the other side. To control the lever swing, a small protrusion is added to the nozzle gear. When the nozzle rotates nearly a full circle, this protrusion pushes the gear lever, causing the nozzle gear to reverse. For adjustable angle control, another protrusion is added to the center shaft connected to a gear driven by the angle adjustment screw. When the angle adjustment screw is rotated, it also rotates the second protrusion. When rotating counterclockwise, this second protrusion engages the gear lever, initiating nozzle gear reversal. Because of that, we can adjust the range the nozzle can rotate back and forth. Additionally, a limit block is installed on the nozzle gear to prevent the second protrusion from moving beyond the 40 degree minimum limit. The output gear, with its speed reduced by 243 times from the turbine's RPM, undergoes further reduction, about six times, via the internal gear fitted to the upper body of the stem. This extensive gear reduction achieves the optimal spraying speed. To maintain a consistent spraying speed, even with fluctuating water pressure, a spring-loaded valve is positioned beneath the turbine chamber to regulate pressure. When the pressure exceeds the designed limit, it pushes the valve against the spring, allowing excess water to flow out from the center without significantly impacting the turbine. Now that we understand how the upper part of the stem rotates at a consistent speed and how the angle adjustment screw sets the spraying range, let's look at another feature the arc adjustment screw. This screw, located directly above the nozzle, simply obstructs the water spray to reduce the spraying arc and increase the distance. Rainbird and other brands of pop-up rotors come with multiple nozzles designed for different spray areas. Larger nozzles cover bigger areas with larger droplets, while smaller nozzles are suited for smaller areas with finer droplets. The nozzles are often provided together as a nozzle tree. In this Rainbird model, the tree includes eight rain curtain nozzles, producing a 25-degree arc, and four low-angle nozzles with a 10-degree arc. 
the unique aspect of these rain curtain nozzles is their ability to spray water evenly throughout the arc. A closer look reveals tiny angle steps on the nozzle, higher angles in the middle and lower angles on the sides. This design allows the nozzle to function like a series of rectangular nozzles, each covering different parts of the arc from nearest to farthest. There are many advanced technologies and principles behind Rainbird's rain curtain technology that are not publicly accessible. Since we're not researchers or competitors of Rainbird, let's be content with this explanation of how rain curtain nozzles work. Finally, to adjust the initial direction of the nozzle, use this type of screw to pull out the stem and rotate it freely before releasing it back. The gear-like base of the inner stem slides along the four ridges of the sprinkler body, allowing the stem to move up and down but not rotate. To rotate the stem, you must pull it up until it disengages from the four ridges, and then you can rotate it to the desired direction. And there you have it. We've explored the fascinating inner workings of pop-up sprinklers, from the precise mechanics of the rising stem to the intricate design of the rain curtain nozzles. These marvels of irrigation technology keep our lawns green and healthy with remarkable efficiency. If you enjoyed this deep dive into sprinkler technology and want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us create more in-depth and informative videos. For those who want to go the extra mile, consider supporting us on Patreon. Your contributions allow us to continue exploring and sharing the wonders of technology and engineering. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.